celebrations outside Parliament in Harare, Zimbabwe, on Tuesday after an announcement that President Robert Mugabe had resigned. M. R. Mugabe, 93, was one of Africa's longest-serving leaders. Ben Curtis Associated Press Good morning. Here's what you need to know a mixed message from Washington, most Americans now get their internet and phone services from one of a few providers, and most TV shows and apps are produced by a handful of big companies. But there is so far no clear view about how Washington will navigate this constantly shifting terrain. One of our business reporters, David Gels, examined the differing stances that the Trump administration has taken this week on one of the central issues shaping business and society. On Tuesday, the FCC announced plans to dismantle rules that prevent Internet service providers from charging higher fees and blocking access to some websites. This video explains how net neutrality works. That followed Monday's lawsuit by the Justice Department to block ATT's proposed takeover of Time Warner. You've got one agency saying that marrying content and distribution results in too much market power, and another agency saying there's no problem with a distributor favoring their content over someone else's, one analyst said. Trump defends more, he totally denies it, President Trump broke with leading Republicans on Tuesday and supported Roy Moore, the Senate candidate in Alabama who has been accused of molesting a 14-year-old girl. The president also praised women for speaking out. I think it's a very special time because a lot of things are coming out, and I think that's good for our society, and I think it's very, very good for women. Separately, Representative John Conyers Jr., a Democrat, is under investigation by the House Ethics Committee for UAL harassment charges. His party's leaders, including Nancy Pelosi, offered little support. CBS fired Charlie Rose on Tuesday, a day after multiple women accused him of UAL misconduct, and John Lasseter, co-founder of the animated film studio Pixar, said he would take a leave of absence after unspecified missteps that made some staff members feel disrespected or uncomfortable. Another Navy accident in Asia, a search is underway after an aircraft carrying 11 people crashed off Japan today. It's the fifth accident this year for the U.S. Navy's seventh fleet, its largest overseas. Japan's public broadcaster reported that at least eight people had been rescued, the Navy relieved Vice ADM. Joseph O'Coin, the head of the 7th Fleet, of his command in August, the Daily. A strong man's rise and fall, Robert Mugabe resigned as president of Zimbabwe after nearly four decades in power. Will he be remembered as a tyrant, or as a hero? Listen on a computer, an iOS device or an Android device. Business Uber disclosed that ERS had stolen 57 million driver and rider accounts. The company kept the data breach secret for more than a year after paying a $100,000 ransom. Meg Whitman is stepping down as chief executive of Hewlett Packard Enterprise six years after joining its corporate predecessor and leading a turnaround effort that split the Silicon Valley corporate icon in two. She will be succeeded by Antonio Neri, the company's president, an Iranian or has been charged in the theft of 1.5 terabytes of data from HBO in May, in attack that include the release of several unaired programs and scripts, U.S. Stocks were up on Tuesday. Here's a snapshot of global markets. Smarter living tips, both new and old, for a more fulfilling life. Avoid bad bargains on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Five lessons from a diplomat on bridging the parent-teacher divide. Have Thanksgiving anxiety. We have you covered with guides, tips and recipes. Noteworthy inside a psychedelic dream home. In today's 360 video, listen to the Bolivian architect Freddy Mamani describe his elaborate electric style, which he says embraces local culture and traditions, it's not just the track that's broken. Andrew Byford, the transit chief in Toronto, was named on Tuesday to take over the management of New York City's ailing subways and buses. Our columnist Jim Dwyer has some advice. The New York transit system has smart people who can fix just about anything that moves. But as much as it needs new parts, it needs a culture where honesty matters, in memoriam. David Cassidy was an actor, singer and teenage heartthrob best known for his role on the 1970s TV sitcom, The Partridge Family. He was 67. David Cassidy in London in 1974. He later wrote about the toll stardom had taken on him, and about his struggles with substance abuse. Elledge Holton archived best of late-night TV, noting that CBS had fired Charlie Rose, Jimmy Fallon said, yeah, they told him to clear out his desk, put on his pants and leave quotation of the day, I just want to say to His Excellency, go and rest now, our father. We still love you. But we're happy today. We're hoping now for a better future, David Mishakwa, a car electrician in Harare, Zimbabwe, referring to Robert Mugabe's resignation. President Trump pardoned a turkey named Drumstick on Tuesday during a pre-Thanksgiving Washington tradition.
I feel so good about myself, the president said. Tom Brenner The New York Times back story last week, President Trump reversed the government's decision to start allowing hunters to import trophies of elephants that were killed in two African countries. More than a century ago, another president took the opposite approach. Theodore Roosevelt on a hunting trip in Central Africa in 1909. He said he was not a game butcher, but rather a faunal naturalist. Hilton Archive Getty Images Shortly after leaving office in 1909, Theodore Roosevelt led a safari to Africa, organized by the Smithsonian Institution and partly financed by Andrew Carnegie, the industrialist and philanthropist. The group gathered specimens for what is now the National Museum of Natural History in Washington. Then, as now, hunting split opinion. When Roosevelt wrote to the Smithsonian in 1908, outlining his safari plans, he insisted he was, not in the least a game butcher, but rather, a faunal naturalist. The expedition lasted nearly a year, stretching from what is now Kenya to Sudan, and included Roosevelt's son Kermit and several naturalists from the Smithsonian. The group ultimately collected more than 11,000 specimens, many of them bugs, plants and small mammals. But about 500 were big game animals shot by Roosevelt or his son. The former president later wrote about the trip in a book, African Game Trails. He was highly sensitive to charges of cruelty but noted, to protest against, all hunting of game is a sign of softness of head, not of ness of heart, underscore 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 there will be no morning briefing on Thursday because of the holiday. Happy Thanksgiving, your morning briefing is published weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern and updated all morning. Browse past briefings here. If photographs appear out of order, please download the updated New York Times app from iTunes or Google Play. What would you like to see here? Contact us at briefing at nytimes.com. You can get the briefing delivered to your inbox Sunday through Friday. We have four global editions, timed for the Americas, Europe, Asia and Australia, and an evening briefing on weeknights. Check out our range of free newsletters here. Follow Chris Stanford on Twitter at Stanford.